born to lose. I've lived my life in vain. Every dream has only brought me pain. All my life I've always been so blue. Born to lose and now I'm losing you. Born to lose my every hope is gone. It's so hard to face the empty dawn. You were all the happiness I knew. Born to lose, and now I'm losing you. Hello friends, and thank you for joining me for my 8th video! Woo! Today I'm going to be talking about the Olympus OM-1. Also the Olympus M-1. Suck it, Leica. Um, sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's a tiny little SLR. Um, the Pentax ME MX series is also really little. Um, some people prefer that over this one. And, um, I don't. I think this camera is incredible, and it's completely changed my outlook on SLRs. I didn't really like SLRs very much. I tried them. I had an F3, um, a Nikon F3. I had Nikon F1. Um, I've just went through a ton of them to see how I felt about it. And for some reason, once I got gifted a silver OM-1 from my friend Charlie, and I held it, there's just something about the size of it, um, and how the layout is. It's just, it's perfect. Um, and the lens options are incredible. There's so many options. Um, I looked up last night, which I normally don't, but I looked up how many lenses there are to choose from in the Zico, uh, series, OM mount series. Um, which work for any OM camera, uh, and you have 13 wide-angle primes, 7 primes, 17 telephoto lenses, 14 zoom lenses, and 6 macro lenses. Um, and you can find out more information on what lenses are what and exactly, you know, their uh, millimeter and their aperture and everything. Um, options are on Camerapedia. Uh, but two of those lenses are shift lenses, which is really cool. Um, and they're just, I don't know, they're just, the lenses perform so well. Um, this is a 35mm f2, um, and it can focus down to 0.3 meters, which is so, so close. Like, I, to be able to shoot wide and then also get in really close is pretty special, I think. Um, and I've never had a lens that can do that. Uh, I'm not saying other lenses can't do that, but I just haven't. Um, but then, another thing to note about how wonderful this camera is, is just its size. If you compare it to a Minolta SRT 101D, you've got kind of a, a beastly difference here. It's just a very different uh, situation. This camera is also very incredible. Um, I'm in the process of trying to sell it right now. Uh, it also has a meter. Um, its shutter speed dial's on top. The Olympus OM-1 shutter speed dial is at the base of the lens. And it's super easy to use. It seems a little weird at first. Um, truly is not weird. You get used to it really quickly. Because in the viewfinder, which has uh, 0.92 magnification at infinity, um, it and a 97% coverage in the viewfinder, which is really bright and really big, uh, it does have a meter uh, switch. So when you do have a battery in, which they don't make the batteries anymore, um, and you can get them adjusted to be able to take uh, different batteries to work the meter, but just trying to put like LR44s in there or something 
you're not going to be able to, even if you wedge it with paper and do foil, you're not going to uh, give it consistent power, so you might get wonky readings. Um, maybe some people have figured out how to do that. I have not. Um, this one's meter inside has completely been removed, and same with my other black body that I have, um, which is broken right now and I'm working on it. Um, yeah, their their meter system just is, is gone, uh, which is fine with me. Um, yeah, you have a switch if you do have your meter working, um, so you can turn it on and off. Always make sure it's off if you're not using it, just so you're not eating up your battery. So when you go out to shoot, you're ready and you can just pop it on and your battery's ready to go. Um, gives you consistent results. Uh, and you have your ASA dial, ISO, whatever, on top that has a lock. So you push a tiny little button over here um, to unlock it, and you want to set that to whatever film you're using so that when you uh, are using your meter, your meter can work with that information and give you proper exposure. Um, and you can do under overexposure sort of things um, as well if you're, in, if you're into that sort of thing. Um, yeah, this, this uh, it's got basic rewind knob, your shutter advance, uh, your little shutter release, which is super quiet, has a rewind tab that you twist this way and it releases the film so you can rewind it, uh, has a mirror lockup tab right here, and that makes it even quieter, even though it's already super quiet, because um, they were inspired by the Leica M series and I'm sure the Leica Barnack, um, so they went all out with stealth silence mode and all of, all of the little not bells and whistles, because it really is a pretty simple camera, um, which I appreciate. Um, but just size. This this body, other than the prism, um, the lens mount distance out here, um, that makes it just a tiny bit bigger than a Leica 3C, which is so small. Um, and to have an SLR that's that little, metal body, um, really, really simple mechanical camera gives you the opportunity, I would consider an opportunity, to make mistakes and not rely solely on um, whatever your camera is telling you to do. So you're not relying on program mode or aperture priority where it's making decisions for you. You're actually like taking in the whole scene. You're taking in what's coming in from over here. You're taking in from what's coming up from over here. You're taking in your scene. You're trying to you're not just composing and firing, you're, you're actually there, you're actually making decisions on the fly, which I think is really important with photography. Um, not to say that program mode is bad, uh, I really don't think that either. Um, I just say that if you have the opportunity to work with a fully manual camera and not rely on a light meter, not rely on things being, decisions being, being made for you, to try it out and not just try it once, but try it for, push yourself to try it for, go out every day, go out once a week, go out whatever, and do it for like a month, two months, and even if you borrow a camera, um, just try it and see what you can get. Um, and I think you'll surprise yourself, I feel like it'll be a beneficial experience, and you might come up with ideas, you might make a mistake that actually influences you to go more in a direction of like, I don't know, more slow exposure or overexposure, more contrast, um, more blur, uh, I don't know, just different, different mistakes I feel like can kind of put you in different places and make you see differently and, um, also successes. Um, so if you want to, if you want to try it out and not just always get perfect exposure, which you definitely can with this camera once you know what you're doing, um, you should, and just see what you get. And uh, I'm gonna keep using it. I think it's one of the best cameras I've ever used. Um, and I think all Olympus cameras are incredible. Point and shoots, range finders, SLRs, uh, I, even their medium format um, cameras, like the folders and stuff. Um, yeah, I just think they're very worth looking into. And they're from the 70s, so beware when you are looking into them to buy or to borrow. They may have some issues, like any camera that's that old. Um, one issue that this camera gets a lot, uh, this one did and I switched out the prism from my broken one, uh, is 
the deterioration from the foam inside that keeps the prism light tight and set tightly down, um, it slowly degrades and it eats through the prism coating to keep it blacked out. Um, and so it gets these like weird bubbles. Um, and so you, when you look through your viewfinder towards the bottom or like the side, you'll get some bubbling. Yeah, that's one thing to look out for. Um, but it is a really easy switcheroo if you do get a camera that has a weird prism. Um, there are other Olympus bodies that share the same prism. Uh, I can't, I think it might be like the OM30 and the OM40. Don't quote me on that, but you can look into it. Um, I think it's those bodies. Uh, they have similar or the exact prism, and so you can just switch those out, no problem. And those cameras, for some reason, I think just because they're newer, uh, don't have the degrading foam, and so that their prisms are generally top-notch. And so, yeah, I mean, and you can you can get a body with a perfect prism, and I would recommend maybe even if you do, check it, make sure the foam inside, or ask the seller if they know if the foam inside has been switched out or removed, because you don't necessarily need the foam inside. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of it with, with the things that can go wrong with this camera that I've experienced is the prism. Um, shutter speeds can be off, obviously. The light meter cannot work because you don't have a battery, or maybe it's just shot or it's been removed. Um, but otherwise, solid camera, really easy to just throw over your shoulder, throw in a bag, and go and just fly through film. Um, and you can get, with this 35 f2 lens, your options for portraiture are like macro even almost, almost, um, and just wide street shots, anything, it's, your availability is, it's just not, it's, it's out, out, out the roof. It's just, it's kind of amazing. Your aperture is up here on the, on the, top of the lens, so it's just like jumping down, and to have all that accessible right at, at one, in a cylinder, right right there, just so close, getting used to that and doing that, it's kind of fun. Um, yeah. And what is photography for, other than fun? Uh, so, yeah, that's the Olympus OM-1. I'm really happy about this camera, uh, and I highly recommend it. Two thumbs up from me. Um, yep. Go out, look for them if you want. Uh, there's also the M1. You can look for that. Uh, same camera, different label. Uh, yeah, the they're really not that hard to find, and they will definitely most like definitely have the prism degradation on the M1s. Uh, so look out for that. And I have some other things coming up that I'm gonna make videos about. Um, I've been talking to retailers, um, trying to see if anybody would want to carry an item I'm in, in the process of making. Um, I'm in the process of making two different things. Um, one is, has a lot of variances. Um, I'm being vague because I don't want to give away too much yet, um, but I will make a video about it. Uh, but they have to do with film photography, and I think they'll be really fun, and I'll keep you posted. And if you want to know more, Feel free to message me on Instagram, I'll link my Instagram below, um, and I can keep you posted through there too. Um, yeah, it's it's just a fun time for film photography, I think. So the more ideas that people have, and if we can get them going, then the better. And so I am trying to, to get more, uh, more spinning in the wheels uh, up here and actually do it. Um, so yeah, I will keep you posted, and thank you so much for watching, and hopefully this video told you something about this amazing camera, and I will post some photos I've taken with it right now. Whee!